Please welcome your host, who is returning for the second year in a row, Chelsea Handler. to the 29th Annual Critics' Choice Awards. I'm your host, Microdose Barbie. Tonight, we're all here to celebrate the brilliant movies and TV shows in 2023 that didn't get shelved for a tax write-off. We've all been through a lot this year, and I don't intend to put you through anymore. So I want you to think of me as your good time doula. There is a party growing inside of you, and I am here to help you birth it. <laughs> of course, nobody had a harder time this year than studio executives who were forced to vacation for six consecutive months in a row. But the strikes are over, and we are back, and we are better than ever. And I am so excited to be hosting for the second year in a row, especially because this was a huge year for women. <laughs> women were victorious in all venues. Barbie at the box office. Taylor Swift and Beyonce on their tours, Gwyneth Paltrow at that ski trial. <laughs> this year proved that when given the opportunity, women show up for each other and dominate the culture. You could almost say it was the year of women. <laughs> I mean, women can say that. Bill Maher would say, is she still talking? Greta Gerwig and Margot Robbie worked tirelessly. <laughs> to bring their vision of Barbie to the big screen. And has anybody ever looked better and more powerful in high heels than Margot Robbie? <laughs> Woo! I mean, besides Ron DeSantis. <laughs> With Barbie, Greta became the highest grossing female director of all time. <laughs> Pulling in over $1.4 billion at the box office. So, while David Zaslav was wearing a zip-up vest and sailing off to Saint-Tropez, one very talented woman swooped in with a movie about female empowerment and saved the entire music industry, movie industry. Excuse me, which can only mean one thing. Hollywood executives are currently debating whether Greta's worth taking a second chance on. <laughs> Speaking of powerful women, Oprah is here for the color purple. to describe you. I mean, your name is so prestigious, such a globally beloved brand of excellence. Um, to give you an idea of how passionate Oprah is about this film, right now you are watching her on the CW. <laughs> and Fantasia and Taraji and Danielle Brooks. Ensemble. In The Color Purple, Danielle's character sings a rousing and defiant number called Hell No about women standing up to the abuse of men. Hell No has since been overturned by the Supreme Court. <laughs> Don't worry, men. I'll get to you eventually. Because in addition to being the year of women, let's celebrate that 2023 was one of the horniest years for movies and TV. Everybody was horny for everything. Ali Wong was horny in beef. Rachel Senna was horny in bottoms. Leonardo DiCaprio and Robert De Niro were horny for land. Killian Murphy was horny for uranium. 
and 2023 was the year that everyone became horny for Pedro Pascal. And of course, in Poor Things, Emma Stone was horny for an apple and pretty much anything else that came her way. Right. My God, Emma. I mean, really, those scenes were something else. I can relate. I, too, was a very horny child. <laughs> that movie had so many on-screen orgasms. Even Meg Ryan was like, take it down a notch, girl. Okay? You're not in a deli. Matt Gomer and Jonathan Bailey from Fellow Travelers. Also very horny. I watched the entire season the other night and I was extremely turned on thinking, am I a gay man? <laughs> the cast of May, December and Killers of the Flower Moon are here. <clears throat> and this is where most comedians would make some sort of May, December joke about Leonardo DiCaprio's dating preferences, but I'm not going to do that because I actually have the same affliction as Leo, but in the opposite direction. <laughs> I prefer my men old and hot. Men who have been around since the railway was invented. <laughs> Speaking of which, Robert De Niro and Harrison Ford are here. I'm looking at the two of you. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know which one of you is hotter. I mean, both of you are total smoke shows. And you guys have both been so hot for so many decades, and you just keep getting hotter. It's enough already. And I know you're both spoken for, okay? So I'm not hitting on you, but I am hitting on you. <laughs> Unfortunately, Martin Scorsese isn't here tonight, but that's not gonna stop me from letting everyone in this room know that I would toss him around like a little Italian meatball. <laughs> Thank you for laughing at that. My writers wrote it. <laughs> and where's Killian Murphy? Hi, Atomic Bomb Ken. Oh, I see him over there. I don't want to reduce anyone's work here tonight to their sex appeal, but I see you over there, you peaky little blinder. And I know you're not old, but you will be someday, and I'll be waiting. <laughs> Bradley Cooper, where's Bradley? Bradley did an amazing job! <laughs> Playing Leonard Bernstein. And as usual, Bradley, you were incredible. You're incredible in everything you do. And his wife, Bernstein's wife, uh, Felicia, was played brilliantly by Carrie Mulligan. <laughs> Bradley spent six years preparing for this role, learning to conduct. So I'm not sure what you're doing over there tonight, but I guess we'll find out in 2030. <laughs> and now it's time to talk about the horniest movie of the year, Saltburn. <laughs> was horny for men, women, bathwater, and cemeteries. <laughs> and by the way, Margot Robbie produced Saltburn, so you're a dirty Barbie, and I like it. <laughs> Which means Margot is responsible for not one, but two spirited dance numbers this year featuring men in various states of undress. <laughs> Most male actors use prosth prosthetics, so thank you, Barry, for keeping it real, and please thank your penis for its service. <laughs> It is an honor to be here tonight, celebrating all of your hard work, your passion, and your creativity. So let's get this party started. Yeah,